As you all probably know, my state is one of those that uh, has been experiencing a great deal of drought. I'm from the state of Utah. Um, estimates are that this is the longest period of drought in the last uh, hundreds of years, going back to 1500. Um, and uh, last couple of winters, we've had some relief. Uh, this last winter, a snowpack was about 114% of normal. Uh, but that doesn't begin to uh, overwhelm the, uh, the challenges that we've had over a longer period of time. Uh, the state has taken a lot of action uh, to try and address that. Uh, the legis legislature has changed water rights legislation. Uh, they put in place a trust fund to buy water rights. Um, some localities like South Jordan are reusing water in ways that are novel and creative. Um, but, uh, uh, but it continues to be a real challenge. Um, I, I guess I had thought as a non-climate scientist that with all the warming, there'd be more rain uh, and the things would get wetter. We keep on hearing about more storms and more violent storms and so forth. So wouldn't there be more water? Maybe there's more water in some places like Iowa um, uh, or Nebraska or other places, but certainly in the American West, the Intermountain West, we're seeing a lot less water. And I, I guess the question is how is and can agriculture adapt to that kind of change? And I mean, are you seeing it in other parts of the country? I'll turn to you, uh, Mr. Richards, first. Um, I, 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 what, what can agriculture do in a setting where you don't know whether it's going to get wetter and wetter and wetter or drier and drier and drier? What, how do you accommodate that kind of uh, disparity? Thank, Senator, thank you for the question. Um, you know, um, the history of American agriculture is, is one of doing more with less. Uh, and so we're very good at uh, adapting and finding ways to be uh, more productive, more efficient with the resources that we have. And I think you're exactly right. It's, it's not just scarcity, it's the variability and the unpredictability of water shortages. And so the questions I have is, is can farmers, family farmers who are just family businesses like my own, can we adapt fast enough? Can we change our business model, change our crop rotation, uh, adjust how we're um, stewarding the soil uh, and preparing it for uh, the variability in the future? Um, can we do that fast enough? And so um, as your colleague uh, asked earlier, I, I think that there are uh, programs within uh, USDA, within NRCS that can enhance and incentivize some of that adaptation. Um, on the ground, ultimately, though, uh, we need investment in infrastructure, um, and not just uh, to save water, but to manage it more collaboratively on uh, basin-wide approaches, which uh, some of my colleagues here at the table also uh, mentioned. And so in Central Oregon, uh, we're, we're finding ways uh, for irrigation districts and other water users uh, which, who normally would operate in isolation to work together uh, and manage things more collaboratively and invest in, in major projects that completely transform uh, the way that we're using water. Thank you. Mr. Colano, Castellano, uh, in Iowa, what, what are you experiencing there in terms of climate? And, uh, and, and, and to what degree uh, are farmers and ranchers able to adjust? Thank you for the question, Senator Romney. Uh, just like yesterday in our state, it's precipitation extremes. That is the biggest challenge for us. And of course, variability from drought to precipitation excess as well. We have a, a drainage infrastructure in our state, just like everybody, every state in the United States does. We are using that drainage infrastructure to do things like drainage water recycling uh, that we heard about earlier. We take the water that comes off the drains. Not only does that reduce nutrient loss downstream, which is a big concern for our Gulf of Mexico, as you're aware, um, so it, it mitigates that. It also can be fed back onto the system to benefit the uh, crop productivity later in the year. Thank you. Uh, I, I just note, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think this is an important topic and, and I'm happy to learn about it and ask questions and learn from these uh, uh, members of the panel. I, I would note that I think uh, perhaps uh, the ENR would be the, the uh, committee that would be focused on this more than budget. I'd hope that we in budget can deal with the $1.5 trillion deficit we have and trying to find some solutions to that. Uh, because if we don't deal with that, we won't have the resources to be able to deal with uh, emerging crises as they develop as a result of climate change uh, and economic disruption of various kinds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.